Hello and welcome back. If you haven't seen me before, I'm uh, Minion J. I'm probably best described as the octopus's lackey. <laughs> I'm the one that ha he tells what to do and uh, obviously goes from there. But before we go into today's video, um, I will put a little bit of an update out. We will discuss this a little bit further in the video. I've actually had an update from Grumpy Granny. So, you know, if you want to stick around just to have a, a bit of a visibility into what's going on with her, um, she is well. So what I'll do, but I'll, like I said, I will talk a bit about that a little bit in the episode. I am losing my voice again. <laughs> I can't catch a break. Uh, so basically, what I want to do today is a bit of a follow up to the last video that I did regarding J Ride flips. Um, like I said in the initial bit of the video, it wasn't really targeted at J-Ride. That I suppose if I was to be brutally honest, I'm, and I have watched a couple of episodes he's been in since and where he's discussed it in lives. Um, if I'm going to be brutally honest, I suppose his conjecture, the way he handles himself regarding you know, falling below standard, you know, I suppose speaking with it, like positivity and all those different things, um, personally, I would like to see a little bit more realism. <laughs> yeah, and obviously it's his personality and there's no issues with that. But when it when it really, I, and I can't amplify enough, when you go below standard, you're screwed. You're like, you're really, really screwed. And if you aren't in a situation like J-Ride is, um, which is quite fortunate, you know, you, you probably will lose your account or you won't sell on eBay again, and which is, you know, quite a big platform from that perspective. And others have mentioned as well is that if you, you are looking at selling on Amazon as well. Amazon is infinitely more difficult to sell on than eBay from what I've been, you know, from what I've been told and what I've been researching as well. So please, please, please do not fall below the standard. So today's episode, I want to talk about, um, I actually had a case closed against me, um, an international order. So what I'm going to do is actually give you a bit of a realistic outlook of yeah how easy it can come by and quite possibly like i said before i haven't actually done any research into j ride and obviously how it, <laughs> all the situations are led to what what happened for him going below standard but so i sold a pair of joy con controllers that yeah the little things that go on the end of the switch uh sold them to columbia so basically ebay uh, i'm not too sure about outside of australia but ebay has a, a very nasty habit in australia is underestimating the delivery time so for Columbia from Australia you know for case study for this thing it was six weeks um, from when I launched the the parcel off within my designated you know one day handling time uh, to it actually arriving at the place that should have gone into Canada uh, Columbia so eBay from memory said two and a half weeks which is by that time the tracking hadn't even left that it basically had left Australia at that time. So I did have the buyer, you know, constantly harassing me in that sense. And yeah, I have no problem with that because obviously they're buying the item. They're quite a new account. They, I didn't get any scammer vibes off them. Yeah, no, no, nothing out of the ordinary or no triggers from the messages that they're sending through. However, they were constant and all these different things. I did lodge a, you know, an investigation with Australia Post, which is what I suggest if you are, you know, having a buyer that, you know, is questioning you where the item is and all those different things and you are noticing that it hasn't moved for a prolonged period of time for a couple of days or whatever it is if it's out of the ordinary launch an investigation like with usps or ups whatever postal service is used in the states uh royal mail in the uk you know australia post with australia so i did that long story short so a week later it gave me a bit of a grace i kept in contact with him and contact's a big thing right so basically this is I think how I negated the situation I'm going into, and you know, basically we'll get into a little bit more as well, is that he actually opened a case with eBay. So I had four days to respond. I could actually refund his money, update the tracking, or um, there's another option. I can't think what it is, but basically they're the two options um, that you want to be looking at. So I wasn't going to refund his money because the item was still in transit as far as I was concerned, um, and I re-uploaded the tracking. So I said, look, hey, it's still in transit. What's going on? So we bounced back between messages just basically because he was becoming more irate, <laughs> which is understandable. Yeah, you know, he wanted his product. Yeah, you know, he was promised that product within a certain time window by eBay, which, like I said before, it's unrealistic. Like Australia Post is phenomenal from our perspective. I, um, you know, I said sell Skylanders, and I do want to touch on Skylanders a little bit episode. Um, and they go to the US and Canada quite frequently, and they're normally delivered maybe a week and a week and a half after I actually lodge it at Australia Post. So they're quite quick to that perspective. Um, but yeah, but like I was saying, back to Canada, uh, Columbia, is that when he actually lodged that complaint, is that, you know, when, you know, it came through, my, my sales went to a grinding halt and all these different things, you know, I got smacked by a pretty big stick. Um, and what I did find as well is that, um, 
you know, closer to that four day period. So I reached out to eBay, let them know, hey, look, you know, the item's still in transit. It has begun moving again. So it's basically cleared Canadian, uh, Colombian customs. I'll get one of that right one day. Cleared customs, you know, it was on, on, on board for delivery. So they extended it by two weeks. And what I was spoken to by Australia Post is that Colombia and a few other countries, they don't have, you know, like, I suppose, delivery details. Yeah. So they won't actually, you know, reflect on, you know, your native, you know, tracking website, you know, Australia Post or, you know, Track 17, whatever you want to use from that perspective as delivered. So that, that in itself <laughs> is a part of the reason why I have scrapped Colombia from my international shipping. Uh, Colombia and Brazil are the, the, probably the big, two biggest ones that I have problems with. Uh, not so much from a scammer's perspective, but probably purely by post. Uh, this is actually the first time I've, I've sent to Colombia, so <laughs> I really don't have much data, but yeah, once bitten, twice shy kind of thing. So eBay extended the the, the, the window for by two weeks, which was still, um, you know, we're probably about the four or five week point at this time. And like I said, that, that six week point. Um, so basically, long story short, once they manually override it, and this is something that I think may have happened to J. Rye Flips, and I want to yeah, make it abundantly clear, is that once they override it and basically extend it, they lock you out of seller resolution, right? So you have two weeks or whatever it is for that item to be delivered. Otherwise, if it's not delivered, eBay will step in um, and then they'll basically you know, give the, the buyer a, a refund. You probably lose your item depending on what the situation is and you'll get a defect. So the defect will be under a transaction defect and also a seller's you know, failure to you know, resolution kind of thing. So the seller's re resolution, and it will have pop-ups you know, coming up here all the time as I edit the video after. So for a se seller's case closed with that seller resolution, um, you've got 0 0.3 until you fall below standard. And that one transaction, because I didn't have no visibility, like I said, I was completely locked out. And this is what annoyed me considerably with eBay and their policies, is that my transaction, one transaction went to 0.19%. So I was like probably one transaction or two transactions away from falling below standard again. So that <laughs> in itself is quite big. You know, like I was saying, I, I do quite a considerable amount of sales, not in the last fortnight <laughs> because, you know, I've been beaten by a big stick. Um, so that is something you need to be very mindful of. How did I rectify that? So once um, eBay closed the case, they, they sent me an email. Um, this is another thing you gotta be mindful of and you constantly keep checking your, your statistics because nowhere in the email did it say that I was going to be penalized. It just said, Hey, look, eBay has looked into it. Um, basically the item hadn't been delivered. Um, that, you know, that there was evidence that the item was being returned to sender for some reason. I'm not too sure that I had the member, you know, reach out to me, correspondent saying that, you know, it was, he refused delivery or something, which into my sense that I should have won the case because <laughs> that's one of the, one of the, um, the catalysts for, you know, for obviously them losing their seller protection or their buyer protection. Um, so the case, and you know, it was all in, oh, you know, I, I hope I don't get this wrong, but I, I dare say Spanish, I think it's Colombia. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Uh, geography is not one of my strong suits. That's why the octopus wants to take over the world, not me. So basically went to their um, their post office website, put the tracking details in and, you know, Google Translate. And it did tell me that the item's coming back to Australia to me, which is good. You know, like the worst case scenario is I'm going to lose out on the postage because these Joy-Cons were just from my wife's uh, Switch that we never used. So they're brand new and pack it. We just swap them out for the, the multi caliber ones that she wants. Um, a bit of a bolo though. You know, if you want to look out for the pure white OLED Switch controllers, they're, they're pretty in demand as well. So keep an eye out for those. Um, so it's coming back. So eBay smacked me with a defect, um, you know, across the you know, transaction defect and also the seller resolution de defect. Um, wasn't impressed to say the slightest. So what I did is I actually reached out to eBay customer service, right? So basically got on there. I will put up the um, little blurb up here, what they've said to me that, that, yeah, they refunded the buyer because I didn't resolve it for them. But <clears throat> my issue is I didn't have the opportunity to resolve it for them. If it really came down to the crux of it, and like I said in that previous video with J-Rod Flips is that, yeah, I'm willing to lose $150 in the offset of not going below standard, right? Because you will, and you know, Jay Rod's flips videos that he's done since then, um, really amplifies what you lose. You know, your return on investment, your opportunity cost, and all these different things. So you need to wake up 
you know, like don't ignore these cases, you know, constantly keep on top of it. When people message you, you know, message them back and all these different things. And I think that was a parting part of the reason why eBay was so lenient with what I did. So like I was saying is, and I've probably put up the little blurb up here as it is, is that eBay removed the defect. Um, it was a one-off. They always say one-off, so don't really <laughs> take that into too much stock. But but you need to be very mindful of the fact is that you, know, you need to keep on top of these things. You need to make sure that you respond to them, you know, converse with all these different things. Because I had a shut up shop and then, you know, the person, you know, reached out to me after four days, the case was closed in their favor and I hadn't engaged in any capacity. eBay wouldn't have removed that, you know, so that I would have been one transaction away from being below standard. So um, definitely want to do that. So getting to the grumpy granny update. So uh, I did reach out to her yesterday. I did mention to a few people that reached out to me previously about it is that I've been holding off reaching out to her because I didn't know <laughs> what what her situation was. I know she was quite ill uh, when we spoke probably about a month ago. Um, I did reach out to her a couple of times on social. But, you know, like I said, it's up to her to, you know, to choose when she's feeling well enough to go from there. Um, I'm, you know, completely honest, I didn't know if she gave up YouTube and she just ghosted everyone. Um, but I did get a to get a hold of her yesterday. So she got pneumonia, pneumonia. <laughs> I always get caught up with that words. So she got that, got over it, caught it again, and now she's got COVID. So she's feeling better, but she's not feeling 100% yet. So she's obviously got COVID now. So it's probably going to fall over for the next couple of weeks. She did mention that she'll probably be back on socials uh, towards the end of the next week or the week after. So please, by all means, I'd probably suggest, you know, she's quite ill still, you know, holding off, you know, you will wishes and all those different things. But by all means, I will put her, you know, channel in the in the section below. She does a reading channel as well. If you have grandchildren or you have, um, you know, children that, you know, like <laughs> elderly women for, for um, lack of, I suppose, a better phase. But, you know, she does reading books and all those different things. And it's fantastic. And I've told her numerous times is that, I think that's where her future lays. Yeah, she would be phenomenal in just reading storybooks and doing the little pictures and all these different things. And I think that she'd be better suited to that from the long term. But we'll see how she goes. Um, I'm, I'll be glad to get back to her. Um, I'm glad that she's feeling better. <laughs> I'm glad that she hasn't ghosted us. Because, um, yeah, like I said, it wasn't just me that she hadn't spoken to. She uh, completely went quiet. So I didn't know if she was haunting <laughs> the local bakery or something. Oh, to that. I was a bit worried for a little bit. But... Before I close out this video, um, I just want to talk about Skylanders quite quickly is that people ask me about variation listings. I make Skylanders on variation listings because I get a ton of them, right? So I probably had conservatively 10,000 over the last, you know, after the last couple of years. Um, this guy, if you see him, don't buy him. <laughs> I have literally 50 of them. I'll probably send you one for free if you buy Skylanders. Um, so basically variation listing, something you can renew, right? So basically if it's something that you can get constant stock of, I'll do a variation listing of. If it's something as a one-off, for example, this Mario Amiibo that you know, is from my collection, I'll probably just list him individually because the likelihood of me coming across another Mario Amiibo like that is non-existent, right? Or very, very, very seldom to occur. So, you know, from those perspective, um, yeah, you may have seen my latest video where I picked up <laughs> a, a metric ton of Sega Saturn um, Japanese games. So basically, I paid $4 Australian a piece for these. So I'm in the process of trying to, to cure a Japanese Saturn so I can actually test them. But these, there's a couple of cases that are cracked, but the discs are immaculate. That, and that's something that I've always been told from importing from Japan. They, they look after their products. So realistically, if you are looking for importing from Japan, yeah, all the all the products are pristine, all these different things. So this game here, <laughs> it's a it's an over an eighteen game. It's a bit of a creeper game, so I won't, <laughs> I won't go too much into it. Um, that goes for anywhere up to one hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars Australian, and probably that'll be the only copy in Australia. So I'll probably shoot higher on that one. Um, so I pay three hundred dollars for seventy five games. So that potentially you know pay a third or almost close to half of the the bundle. There's a lot of games. That I probably will list at the twenty four ninety nine free postage, but there's a lot of games across the spectrum, so I'm definitely, definitely, you know, well and truly into the profit on that one when I do list it. So for that one, for example, I do find a lot of listings that have a variation listing. I probably will list them individually with free postage. Um, that if you know if people buy multiples, more than one. Um, They'll get the free postage. I'll be able to combine them, you know, and skim off the top for the postage as well. 
um, and that's all those different things. But before I go, uh, this week we're talking about <laughs> Master of Darkness uh, for the Sega Master System. Like I said, this is a, another one. If you're into Castlevania, like for the Nintendo, I know a lot of North America probably didn't have you know, the Sega Master System. You definitely wouldn't have had this game on the Sega Master System. It was only released in Europe and Australia, I think. So basically, the Castlevania knockoff for the, the Master System, uh, quite rare in the state. So yeah, if you do come across it or you do have a copy in, in your own personal collection, definitely have international shipping on it. Probably go to the states. Oh, show and tell as well. Don't really like doing what solds, but keep an eye out for big box games. I sold this one for 120 bucks this morning. Paid nine dollars from the thrifts. Um, I dare say it was probably brand new, actually. I think they may have opened it just quickly just to see the contents, make sure it was all in there. Um, probably took about three weeks to sell. And, yeah, like I said, the, keep an eye out for Skylanders. Like I was saying, if you buy them in bunches, you know, like a little lot, reach out to me personally. I'll probably buy them off you depending on what your price is. Um, but be mindful of that a lot of the ones that you see on Facebook Marketplace, have a look at the the member's profile or the, the seller's profile is in the sense that, if they've got lots and lots and lots of listings, um, there's a good chance they're a reseller, right? They've probably taken out the good Skylanders. But alternatively, if it's just you know, someone in the middle of nowhere, we're like, I'll get my Skylanders from. Um, one listing, they've probably got like three reviews or something along the lines of that. They're the Skylander packs to do. So let me know in the comment section below um, if you want me to do a top 10 Skylanders to look out for. And these are going to be ones that you'll come across fairly often. Um, not like the, yeah, the ones that... Yeah, four or five exist in the wild or something like that. This will be ones that you've legitimately got a chance of looking out for and coming across. Um, like I said, there's there've been there's a certain trap, and I don't have any traps on me at the moment, but I'll just use my beloved creeper for a size. But they're about a little bit bigger than that, so they're it's big. Um, I've come across a few of those that sell for about three fifty, three hundred dollars Australian, and I have sold them within twenty four hours to the states. So, like I said, that I'm more than happy to do that video. Skylanders. Uh, a good um but they're quite like i said you, you kind of need to build a profile up and have all those different things so if you come across them as one-offs come across them as one-offs uh better off just sending them as a lot and going from that but if you come across you know a constant supply of them like i do because i come across them fairly often uh variation listings because like back from burnout she did a video this morning um, about selling 47 books it's not uncommon for me to sell you know, probably 20 or 30 of these in one transaction. My uh, my voice is going out again, but what I'll do is I'll say goodbye. Uh, if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, it makes a lot to me. And a uh, th big thank you to Grumpy Granny. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave her details below in the in the description field as well and also the comment field. So by all means, slither over there, give us some support. And anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye.